Hey there, everyone. Welcome to Math 35. This is College Algebra at College of the Sequoias. Uh, today we're continuing Chapter 1. This is on solving rational equations and radical, radical equations. This is 1.6. So chapter 1, Section 6. Or 1.6 is on radical equations and rational equations. <clears throat> so previously we covered solving uh, linear equations and quadratic equations. Now what happens when they're a little bit more complicated? Uh, so let's just start off with an example and illustrate what to do. I'm going to start off with 2x minus 3 over 2 plus 5x over x plus 1 equals x. Now, the idea is something that's useful is we want to clear the fractions and identify bad solutions. Bad solutions is where the bottom equals zero. So in this case, uh, and I like to call the bad solutions bad juju. So my bad juju numbers. And we did this in a previous section. Uh, the only spot I have a variable, the only spot I can get a zero in the denominator would be at x plus one. So I'm going to set x plus one equal to zero, and I'm going to solve for x, and I get x equals negative one. That's bad juju right there. We don't want it. So if we see it, we have to eliminate it. If this shows up in answers, we eliminate it. In the solution, we eliminate it. Okay. So uh, now clearing the fractions. Clearing the fractions, we should multiply by the LCD. And in this case, that is 2 and x plus 1. So I'm going to multiply both sides by that. Let's do 2 times x plus 1 here. And we'll distribute it to everything there. And we'll do 2 and x plus 1 over here. That's what I'm doing right there. So the long way is distributing it to each. And if I do, on top, I've got 2x minus 3, but I'm doing it on top, not on bottom, times 2 times x plus 1. Maybe I should point at the top. Get rid of that bottom. That's confusing. And the bottom's still 2, and then I've got plus 5x times 2 times x plus 1 over x plus 1 equals 2 times x is 2x times x plus 1. When we cancel stuff out, the 2s go away here. The x plus 1s go away here. And I'm left with 2x minus 3 times x plus 1 plus 5x times 2 equals 2x times x plus 1. And now we can try to solve. OK? Uh, well, we should clean this up. We should distribute. If I distribute this, foil out this first stuff, I've got 2x squared plus 2x, and then minus 3x minus 3. 5x times 2 is plus 10x. And if I distribute the 2x times x plus 1, I've got, don't forget the equal sign, 
2x squared plus 2x. Now, I'm going to try to gather all my variables on the same side and combine like terms. So I'm going to subtract that right side. And I've got negative 3x minus 3 plus 10x equals 0. Gathering like terms, 10x minus 3x is 7x. Um, solve for x, we add 3 to both sides. We get 7x equals 3. Divide by 7, and we get x equals 3 sevenths. And then be sure to compare with bad juju numbers. In this case, x equals 3 sevenths is not a problem. So that's our answer. You can always check your work by plugging it back in. In fact, if you're not good with fractions inside of fractions, you should do that here. You should plug in 3 sevenths into this and work it out. Okay? It will give you good practice. So let's just make a little checklist of what we did. So solving rational equations. Before you clear fractions, you should identify erroneous solutions or bad juju solutions. By finding where the denominator equals zero. And finding values for the variable that makes the denominator zero. Then You want to find the LCD or least common denominator and multiply all terms by this. Clear the fractions. At this point, it's no longer a rational equation. because you cleared the fractions, there's no ratios left. Uh, so solve normally. Uh, this, this might include distributing, gathering like terms, And you may have, it might be linear, it might be quadratic, where you got to use the different things we had in, uh, I think, 1.4, was it? Or harder. <laughs> and uh, so you solved, and now you have an answer. Uh, verify the, the solutions are not bad juju solutions, not erroneous solutions or bad juju.
And ideally, check your solutions. by evaluating in the equation. Evaluating in the original equation before you even cleared fractions. All right, if you need this longer, pause it. I'm going to walk you through another one, and then I'm going to give you one to do. We'll get, I'll give you one to do. We'll pause it and go from there. Uh, let's take a look at, uh, we've got x over x minus 5 plus 5 equals 5 over x minus 5. So, what's our bad juju solutions? Part A, bad juju. The, we have two denominators that are identical. They're both x minus five. We set equal to zero and we solve by adding five to both sides. And we find x equals five is a bad juju solution, so x cannot equal five. B, we're gonna clear the fractions. The only common denominator is x minus 5, so I'll multiply both sides by x minus 5. And we'll distribute. In the first term, the x minus 5 and the denom denominator cancel, I have x. On the next term, I have plus five times x minus five. And on the right side, I have just five. All right. All right, so if now linear, we can solve for it, let's distribute. I distribute the five, I've got five times x is five x, and five times negative five is negative 25. I gather like terms, I have six x minus 25 equals five. We add 25 to both sides, we get six x equals 30. We divide by six and we get x equals five. Now, D, is it bad juju? Is it a bad juju solution? Yes, bad juju. So we eliminate it. X equals five does not work. and we didn't have any other solution, there was no other solution, so this equation is unsolvable. There is no, there is no solution. Okay, so sometimes you don't get an answer. <clears throat> Let me give you one. You're gonna do x minus five times x minus three, or over x minus three, plus one over x 
equals negative 7 over x squared minus 3x. Now, pause the video and try to solve this. Okay? This is good practice. If you don't practice, this is going to be hard. All right, so part A, I'm going to factor, and it's easier to check for erroneous solutions that way. Find factors at the bottom. For the LCD. <clears throat> so x minus 3 is just x minus 3. We can't change that. X is just at, oops, X. I'll make a new column for that. And X squared minus 3X is X minus 3 times X. So my LCD is one from each column. X minus 3 and X. That's what I'm going to multiply by, but first set these set this equal to zero. So bad juju. X minus three times x equals zero. X minus three equals zero, or x equals zero. And we solve the right one or left one. X equals three, or x equals zero, or bad juju. So we got to eliminate them. X cannot equal three, X cannot equal zero. Keep that in mind for later on. <clears throat> Our LCD is the denominator on the right. It's the X squared minus three X. It's got everything. So multiply everything by X times X minus three. If I do that, I've got x minus 5 over x minus 3 times x times x minus 3 plus 1 over x times x minus 3 times x equals negative 7. And the denominator clears on that one completely. Cancels with LCD clearing. So x minus 3 is cross off there, x is cross off here. I've got x minus 5 times x plus 1 times x minus 3 is just plus x minus 3 equals negative 7. Hopefully you did this and you got to this point. So we solve. I distribute, I get x squared minus 5x I'll gather like terms, the two x terms can be put together, negative 5x plus x is negative 4x and I have an x squared, this is quadratic so I want to get everything on one side so I can factor, so I'll add 7 to both sides And if you factor this, this is x minus 2 times x minus 2 equals 0. Or you could say x minus 2 squared equals 0. <clears throat> and we set each equal to 0. And in both cases, we get x equals 2. And the only reason I'm saying it twice is this, giving you a little bit more information. When the solution appears more than once,
we call it multiplicity. So, x equals 2 with a multiplicity of 2. That's what we say for this problem. x equals 2 is the solution. It shows up twice, so it's a multiplicity of 2. Are we good? No, I didn't check for bad so solutions, did I? Verify x equals 2 is not a bad juju solution. Uh, it's not 0 and 3 were bad juju. x equals 2 is not that number, so we're good. Ideally, you'll plug it in and uh, verify it. Let me give you another one. x over x plus 5 plus 5 over x minus 5 equals 50 over x squared minus 25. So pause this and try to work it out. All right, I'll assume you did. Uh, so we want to find an LCD. Note that x squared minus 25, this is a difference of squares. This is a squared minus b squared. Recall is a minus b, a plus b. So this is x minus 5, x plus 5. And that's what my other terms were, so that's the LCD. I'll set it equal to zero for bad juju numbers. X minus five equals zero or X plus five equals zero. So X cannot equal five or negative five. And we can use plus or minus five like that. So that's my bad juju, pay attention for it. And multiplying both sides by by x minus five, x plus five, <clears throat> we get x times x minus five times x plus five over x plus five plus five times x minus five, x plus five over x minus five equals 50 x minus 5 x plus 5 over x squared minus 25, which is x minus 5 x plus 5 on bot. So we cancel out stuff that appears in common. x plus 5 is canceled there. I have x times x minus 5 x minus 5 is canceled there. I get plus 5 times x plus 5. And both x minus 5 and x plus 5 cancel on the right, top and bottom, leaving behind 1s. We get just the 50. So we, now we solve it. We distribute x times x is x squared. x times negative 5 is negative 5x. And then 5 times x is plus 5x. Those are going to cancel, equals 0 there. And then 5 times 5 is plus 25. The right side is still 50. So combining the negative 5x and 5x, we have x squared plus 25 equals 50. We can either recall, gather them all on the same side and try to factor. If I do that, subtract 50 from both sides, I get x squared minus 25 equals zero. 
factor, that's difference of squares, x minus five, x plus five, and we get x equals plus or minus five. Or uh, solve for x squared here when, when there's no x term. And take the square root. I subtract 25 from both sides, I get x squared equals 25. Square root of both sides, this is x, this is plus or minus 5. Same solutions. So I found the answer. Excellent, right? No. Check your solutions. Check for bad juju. Both solutions are bad. which means no solution. The problem is unsolvable. Some people put DNE, does not exist. All right, that's how you do rational equations. Let's take a look at radical equations. Uh, what you wanna do is isolate the radical if you can. And then raise both sides to the power, both sides of the equation. To a power that will clear the radical. Uh, it's important to note by doing this, we can introduce solutions that don't work in the original equation. Do not work. So when you do radical equations, you must must, must, must check your work. Okay. And once you've cleared the, once you've cleared the radical, solve normally. Solve normally, check your solutions. And in this case, it is not optional. Example. X minus the square root of 4X plus 12 equals zero. To isolate the radical, I'm gonna add it to the other side. And I get x equals the square root of 4x plus 12. That was part A. 
Part B is raise both sides of the equation to a power that will clear the radical. The radical is a square root or exponent equals one half. And to turn one half into one, we have to square both sides. One half times two equals one. So I square both sides. The left side is x squared. The right side is 4x plus 12. I'll subtract over the 4x plus 12 from both sides. I get x squared minus 4x plus 12 equals 0. If I factor that, I have x minus 6 and x plus 2 equals 0. And this leads me to solutions of x equals 6 or x equals negative 2. But now I have to check my work. So check. So I'll check, uh, let's check x equals six first. And I'm doing that by plugging it into the original equation. Six minus the square root of four times six plus 12, does that equal zero? Uh, four times six is 24. So six minus the square root of 24, Plus 12, does that equal zero? 24 plus 12 is 36. Six minus the square root of 36, does that equal zero? Square root of 36 is six. So six minus six does equal zero. So x equals six is a valid solution. Got to check the other one, x equals negative two. I've got negative two minus the square root of four times negative two plus 12. Does that equal zero? Well, four times negative two is negative eight. So I've got negative two minus the square root of negative eight plus 12, does that equal zero? Negative two minus, negative eight plus 12 is four. So negative two minus the square root of four, does that equal zero? Square root of four is two. So I've got negative two minus two equals zero. And we get negative four on the left. Negative four does not equal zero. So X equals negative two, doesn't work. The only answer is x equals 6. Now I told you isolate the radical if you can. The next problem you can't. Not right away, so this is what we're going to do. I'll show you. So, 3x, minus, or 3x plus 1 is in a radical, and then we're going to subtract another radical. x plus 4 equals 1. We can't isolate the radical, but we can separate them. So I'm going to add the square root of x plus 4 to both sides. And I get square root of 3x plus 1 
equals 1 plus the square root of x plus 4. So these are both square roots. We're going to square both sides. And I want to remind you what that means. Squaring it really means this. I've got square root of 3x plus 1 times the square root of 3x plus 1. And on the right side, I've got 1 plus square root of x plus 4 times 1 plus square root of x plus 4. So we're going to have to distribute. Don't just try to square the things individually over there. Must distribute. The left side's just fine. Square root of three x plus one squared, they cancel out. That's just three x plus one. The right side, when I distribute, I've got one times one is one. One times the square root of x plus four is plus the square root of x plus four. Then I've got square root of x plus 4 times 1 is square root of x plus 4. And finally, I do the last distribution plus square root of x plus 4 squared. So that was just distributing the right side and, and addressing the radical on the left. Uh, so I've got 3x plus 1 over here. On the right, I've got 1. And I've got two radicals that are identical, so I can add them together. 2 times the square root of x plus 4. And then x plus the radical x plus 4, the square root of x plus 4 squared is x plus 4. Again, now isolate the radical. We still have a radical, so we can isolate the radical now. So I'll subtract 1, I'll subtract x, and I'll subtract 4. And on the left, I get 3x minus x is 2x. 1 minus 1 minus 4 is negative 4. On the right side, the 1 and negative 1 cancel. The x plus 4 and negative x minus 4 cancel. I just have the 2 times the square root of x plus 4. Uh, sometimes this can go two ways at this point. A, divide by the coefficient of ra the radical. if it doesn't introduce fractions. For B, square it and the radical. So let's just do both ways and I'll show you what I mean. Uh, this one I can divide by two. So if I do option A here, I'll divide by 2 on both sides. And I get 2x divided by 2 is x. And negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2. And I get square root of x plus 4. Now I can square both sides to clear the radical. And recall, x minus 2 squared is x minus 2 times x minus 2. You multiply that out, you get x squared minus 4x plus 4 equals, on the right side, we've got x plus 4. 
now we solve. We have an x squared, so I'm going to gather all the terms on the same side by subtracting x and negative and, and 4 from both sides. And I get x squared minus 5x, the 4 and negative 4 cancel, equals 0. This does factor. x times x minus 5 equals 0. So either x equals 0 or x minus 5 equals 0. x equals 0 or 5 are my potential solutions. Let's check them. X equals zero in the original equation. The zeros cancel out everything with an X in it. So I have the square root of one minus the square root of four. Does that equal one? One minus two does not equal one. So X equals zero is bad. Now we'll check x equals 5. I've got square root of 3 times 5 plus 1 minus the square root of 5 plus 4. Does that equal 1? Three times 5 is 15 plus 1 is 16. Square root is 16 and then minus 5 plus 4 is 9. Square root of 9. Does that equal 1? Square root of 16 is 4. Square root of 9 is 3. I've got 4 minus 3 equals 1. That's true. So our only solution is x equals 5. Now, what if I had a 3 in front of, of that radical instead of a 2? Dividing by a 3 would have given me a 2 thirds and a negative 4 thirds. That's not optimal when you're squaring it. So, let's just show option B. I should get x equals 5, right? It should be the same answer. Uh, back to, we were at, so we started off with 3x plus 1 minus the square root of x plus 4 equals 1. Fast forward to 2x minus 4 equals 2 times the square root of x plus 4. Now we'll do option B. Square everything. And squaring everything on the right really means squaring the two and squaring the radical. Anything that's multiplied together, you square both of them. So this is 2x minus 4 times 2x minus 4 equals 2 squared is 4 times x plus 4 radical squared is x plus 4. Now, notice this is harder than the other way. But if you introduce fractions, this is the easier way, okay? So option B is only if you introduce fractions. Otherwise, you're making more work for yourself because this is more work to do. Uh, 2x times 2x is 4x squared. Then I keep distributing. I have minus 8x and a minus 8x plus 16 equals 4 times x is 4x, and 4 times 4 is 16. So gather like terms. On the left, I've got 4x squared minus 16x plus 16 equals 4x plus 16. And now I can solve. I'll uh, subtract 4x from and 16 from both sides. And I get 4x squared minus 20x 
equals zero. So 4x squared minus 20x, their greatest common factor is 4x. So I've got 4x times x minus 5 equals 0. Set them each equal to 0, 4x equals 0, or x minus 5 equals 0. And we're back to the same two solutions we had before. x equals 0 or x equals 5. And we already showed x equals 0 does not work. So our only solution is x equals 5. So clear the coefficient in front of the, when you have, have a scenario like this, clear the coefficient if it doesn't introduce fractions. Otherwise, square it, or whatever power you need, square every square everything. And if it introduced a, if, if it was going to introduce a fraction with if you divide it by the coefficient, it's gonna have a fraction in the answer. There will be a fractional answer. There will be fractions in the answer, but it, I'm going to say more than likely. I don't want to say that's 100%. There might be a scenario where it works out and gets rid of the fractions at the end. Um, let's see, what else can we do for you? So I said we want to clear, frac or clear the radicals. Uh, so far, we've only done square roots. Let's take a look at when it's not a square root. So what happens if the radical is not a square root? or equally, equivalently, if the exponent is not one half. Let's take a look at that. Let's take a look at an example. x to the 3 halves equals 2 16. And our goal is to find x. And recall, we're going to use the power of the power rule. x to the m raised to the nth power is x to the m times n. I need to raise the three to this side so that I end up, the goal here is to end up with x to the first power. That's the goal. So I need to raise both sides to a power. Let's, uh, question mark, what do I raise it to? Well, I want that three halves. We're going to apply that property here. We're going to use that there. So what that says is I have x to the 3 halves raised to the question mark equals x to the 3 halves times question mark. And I want that to equal x to the first. So my exponents have to equal 3 halves times question mark equals 1. 
multiply both sides by the reciprocal, and I get question mark equals two thirds. Here, I made question mark was my variable. I use question mark for a variable. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, as long as you make sure it's clear that it's a, a variable. So what did I do? This question mark has to equal two thirds. I have to raise both sides to two thirds. So the three halves and the two thirds cancel on the left. I have 216 to the two thirds on the right. Well, what is that? That's a little, a little rough to work with. What can we do? I can write that as x equals, I could write it as 216 squared to the one third, or x equals 216 to the one third squared. Squaring 216 is gonna give me a really, really big number. I think that's the harder one to work with. Let's work with that one. This is x equals the cube root, that's what one third is as an exponent, 216 squared. So if we factor 216, let's see, what do we get when we factor 216? Uh, it's divisible by two. That gives 108. I could divide that by two again. And that would be 54. Divisible by two again. Gives me 27. And 27 I know is three cubed. So what I have is x equals the cube root Then we square it. I've got two cubed and three cubed in there. The cube root and the cube cancel out. This is just x equals two times three squared. X equals six squared or x equals 36. All right, ready for more? Let's make it a little bit harder. I'm gonna start off with x plus seven to the two fifths equals four. Why don't you try to apply the principle we just did on this problem? And it's gonna be hard, it's not simple. But give it a try, pause this, give it a try. All right, I'm gonna assume you did. Uh, what we did is we had to raise both sides to the reciprocal of the exponents that's there. Two fifth is there, so I'm gonna raise both sides to the five halves. And on the left, that gives me x plus seven. And on the right, I've got four to the five halves is two squared to the five halves, which is two to the two times five halves, which equals two to the fifth, which is 32. So working with your exponent, you got a lot of working with exponents there, fractional exponents. Remember we reviewed that, that's why we did all that review earlier. Uh, X plus seven, equals 32. We saw, we subtract seven, x equals 25.
And finally in this section is other weird equations. And I want you to recall, we know how to solve AX squared plus BX plus C equals zero. Some equations don't start like this, but can be made to look like it. And that gives us a new tool for working with it. And we're gonna use substitutions use substitutions or a u substitution let's just get you introduced to the phrase now a u substitution is replace the weird thing with a u weird term with a u okay i'm going to switch to another play page for this one So I'm gonna, so our example, we'll start off with, this is a relatively simple one. X minus three parentheses squared minus six times parentheses X minus three plus eight equals zero. Now I could distribute this and solve. I could distribute this and solve. In fact, let's do that. This is x minus three times x minus three. This is x squared minus six x plus nine. And then I've got minus six x plus 18 plus eight equals zero. x squared minus 12 x. And 18 plus nine is 27 plus eight is 35. That does factor x minus seven times x minus five equals zero. And we set each of them equal to zero. And I get x equals seven or x equals five. Now doing this approach wasn't too hard on this problem. Some problems are a lot harder, so let's try, let's do this with the U sub method. With the substitution. Notice I have X minus three squared and X minus three. What if I let u equal x minus three. Then that turns into u squared and u. So I'm gonna do that here, u sub method. Let u equal x minus three. I get u squared minus six u plus eight equals zero. So we're gonna sub u in, substitute u in. Solve easier. Then we have to sub it out. Then we have to unsub it. or sub it back out. Let's 
So if I factor u squared minus 6u plus 8, I get u minus 4 and u minus 2. u minus 4 equals 0 or u minus 2 equals 0. I get u equals 4 or u equals 2. But I don't want to end there. I'm going to do that substitution. I'm going to put replace u with its value x minus 3 equals 4 or x minus 3 equals 2. And I get adding 3 to both sides in both problems, I get x equals 7 or x equals 5. Notice these are identical solutions. Now, agreed. Well, you may not agree. I think the top method is, or just distributing and solving normally is pretty easy up top, but that's in this problem. Some cases it's not that easy. So let me show you some examples where it's not so obvious. Example. x to the one half power minus five x to the one fourth power plus six equals zero. This might be easier to write one half as the same denominator as the four. This is the same thing as x to the two fourths minus five x to the one fourth plus six equals zero. If I do that, notice I can separate that. I can make that x to the one fourth squared minus five times x to the one fourth to the first power plus six equals zero. Maybe if I don't have that one there, it's less confusing. Notice I have something that repeats. I got x to the one fourth, one of them squared, one isn't. Let's let u equal x to the one fourth. If I do that, I get u, u squared minus 5u plus 6 equals 0. Well, I can factor that. That's u minus 3 and u minus 2 equals 0. u minus 3 equals 0 or u minus 2 equals 0 u equals 3 or u equals 2. But I didn't start with u, I'm not going to end with u. Didn't start with the letter u, don't end with it. x to the 1 fourth equals 3 or x to the 1 fourth equals 2. And we just showed how to do something like that just a little bit ago. We're going to raise both sides to the reciprocal of that fraction. And 4 over 1 is just 4. So I got x equals 3 to the 4th power, or x equals 2 to the 4th power. This is 81 or 16. That's the easier method. Okay? That is what I would do. Some folks can do this. Some folks are comfortable doing this. I can take that line and I can factor it into x to the one fourth 
minus three equals zero, and x to the one fourth minus two equals zero. And then solving, and you'll get that. Some folks are comfortable doing this. I'm not one of them. I can do it, and that's just because I've done math for so long that I recognize what's going on. I'm, I'm really, I do the u substitution method and then go, okay, well, once I factored here, you could put the x to the one fourth back in right there. Notice that's just replacing the, replacing u with x to the one fourth before solving. I don't think it's that, I don't recommend that. I think do the u sub, get to here, replace u with its original value and solve. So this part right here that I did right there, not recommended. Ooh, let's make this a bigger, thicker pin. I want this to stand up. All right. Do another. I've got 15 x to the negative 2 minus 4 x to the negative 1 minus 3 equals 0. Oh, negative 1, not a negative 2 there. And I can write this as 15 x to the negative one times two minus four times x to the negative one minus three equals zero. And I realize this is not a trivial step for a lot of people. You're trying to see, try to see if the exponent of one thing is twice or double the other of the other term. So negative two is twice negative one. So negative one, that's what I'm gonna set u equal. I'm gonna use that one as the exponent, u equals x to the negative one. And this becomes 15 u squared minus four u minus three equals zero. And you know how to solve this. Uh, solve normally. This video is getting a little bit long. So solve normally. And at the end, replace u with x to the negative 1 or u equals 1 over x. And u squared equals x to the negative 2, which is u squared equals 1 over x squared. Oh, wait, you're not going to need that part. That's the only one you're going to need, u equals 1 over x. And solve after replacing it. In the interest of saving time, we're not doing it. I just wanted to illustrate what you do with the exponent, okay?
Let me give you guys one to try real quick. You try. Let's do 18x to the fourth power minus 29x squared plus 3 equals 0. All right, I'm going to assume you pause the video. I can write this as notice. Four is twice two. So I'm going to use that as my exponent. If I do that, this is 18x squared squared minus 29x squared plus 3 equals 0. I will let u equal x squared. Eighteen u squared minus twenty nine u plus three equals zero. Uh, let's see, a times c is eighteen times three is fifty four, and b is negative twenty nine. Uh, two factors that multiply to fifty four, pause at fifty four, but add to negative nine. They both got to be negative. Let's see, negative one, negative fifty four is negative fifty five. That doesn't work. Uh, 54 divided by 2 is 27. Negative 2, negative 27. Those add up to negative 29. That works. So I've got 18 u squared minus 2u minus 27u plus 3 equals 0. You factor by grouping. I can pull out a 2u, leaving behind 9u minus 1. And I can pull out a 3 here, and leaves behind negative 3, and that leaves behind 9u minus 1. So I finished solving this. I've got 2u minus 3 in parentheses times 9u minus 1 in parentheses equals 0. Set each of these equal to 0. I get u equals 3 halves, or u equals 1 ninth. But that's not what u equaled. u was x squared. And we'll solve that by taking the square root of both sides. So I get x equals plus or minus the square root of 3 halves. And if I multiply by that by root 2 over root 2, I get x equals plus or minus square root of 6 over 2. Or square root here, I get x equals Square root of 1 is 1, square root of 9 is 3. That's already a perfect square on top and bottom. That's my answer. That's four answers. Plus and minus each count as an answer. Original exponent was 4. That works. You should. You, the most number of answers you can have is equal to the exponent that you have. We'll cover that again later. That wraps up 1.6. Peace. Take care. I'll talk to you later. Uh, I'll do 1.7 and 1.8 shortly. And have a good day.